Hi, everybody. I'm Tamara Zoner. And I'm John Davis. Welcome to Spirit Cafe. Come in, sit down, and... Grab a cup of love. A Spirituality Without the Guilt podcast. Are the end times near? Are we heading into dark times? Are we going to a place where we have always feared of going? Or is in your spiritual belief, do you believe the end times are coming? Hey guys, John Davis, how are you? Good to see you guys. I'm so excited to talk to you about this topic. And I am here once again, of course, with the lovely, lovely Tamara Zoner. How are you, Tamara? I'm great, John. I feel like I shouldn't be smiling at that very scary <laughs> introduction. <laughs> Whoa. I was using my smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Good. The end times made you smile. How exciting is that? Right. <laughs> right. Right. So the go ahead. I'm just go ahead. I don't know. Do the end times make me smile? Let's find out. Okay, there you go. The end times. So now all kinds of spiritual believe has end times or catastrophic um, outcomes to our existence and, and judgment and fear. And most of them have used that, that story as a means of um, controlling their people. They say, you got to get it right, right here, right now, because if you don't, in the end times, you're not going to be one of the ones. Now, there's a lot of this that we're going to unfold in this conversation about the historical aspects of that, but there's there's also a, the idea of how how you get controlled by your fear, and you know Buddha says the the eradication of fear is the secret to enlightenment, and you know, you know and in the Bible it says, "Lo, that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for Thou art with me." Well, if love is with you, then there is no fear mm-hmm. because you don't have to fear. So. There's there's a very big um, schism there between what the Bible says and what a lot of spiritual thought says, and then there's this giant thing out there that says, oh, yeah, all this good stuff you're doing over here, it's still going to end bad, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Good luck to you, kid. <laughs> right. What's your, what's your thought on that? <laughs> oh, my. Uh, well, you know, full disclosure, I... I know very little on purpose about all this end times because Mm -hmm. I have some doomsday thinkers in my family and there may be years worth of water and MREs and toilet paper in some closets and some family members (laughs) homes. And that is rather the opposite of how I live my life in the moment. Yes, I make sure I have enough to get me through a few weeks. And no, I don't need to plan for doomsday because, you know, as a coach who teaches people how to consciously create lives they love, there comes into play that law of attraction. And so what we think about, we bring about. So if I'm focused on doom and destruction and despair, how on earth am I going to live joyfully? <laughs> Not, it, it, I can't on doomsday. earth. I cannot on earth live joyfully. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's let's drop into a couple of things. We, you know, when we talked about this, I love that. I love that statement because you, you're living your spirituality. I think spirituality is very present moment because mm-hmm. it is the only moment you have. But yeah, exactly. if we drop into a couple of historical things, just. The one that always, there's a couple of them, but there's one that gets me, that's really interesting. Everybody gets so into this rapture thing, the, the, the rapture, be one of the 144,000 that are going up with the da 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 right? Did you know the rapture's not in the Bible? I only knew because you told me when we started <laughs> discussing this as a topic. So I am so surprised by that. So tell us more about where this idea came from and why People who don't study the Bible think it's there. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a great uh, question because the back in 1830, uh, a Protestant minister whose last name was Darby uh, read a line in the Bible that said, he, and the, this is all the Bible says, he will gather them up. That's it. What's the context? Gather them up. <laughs> so... Darby says, what does that mean? And he decided to extrapolate and he started to write down what he meant. And he started saying, well, he got this message from God. 
and this God said that 144,000 souls are going to be gathered up at the, at the end times, and he created the entire structure of the rapture. So the rapture did not exist until 1830. <laughs> right, right. Wow. Okay. And hold on. So specifically, 144,000 souls. That's right. it. That's all that gets to go through. That's that's correct. Remind me how many people are on the planet right now. And and isn't that gross? <laughs> yes. <laughs> really, right? 144, right? That's a wow. math joke. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to go my, to my math jokes. Thank you very much. Uh, um, <laughs> sorry, folks. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> um, so 144,000 souls are going to go, are going to be quote unquote gathered up because Darby said they're going to be gathered up. Now, what happened was there's this whole big thing in especially evangelical Christianity that they want to talk doom and gloom. They want to talk all kinds of things because evangelicals have private jets. Evangelicals <laughs> have money, and you know, and so they want to peddle the fear, just like a a medicine seller would back in the in the day in the old west. You know, the, the snake oil salesman, right? Um, they're, they're 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 peddling fears that they can have private jets and they can travel all over the world, and so the evangelicals grabbed a hold of Darby Darby's rapture because it's the perfect marketing tool of fear. Mm -hmm. you no, know, you have to be one of the ones and you got to come here and pray with me and you got to send your money in to support our cause to, to make sure you're part of the rapture. Now, if you back it up back in the middle, middle ages, the Catholic Church was telling people on their deathbed, you're going to go to hell if you don't leave me all your land. Oh, it's, a, it's the same exact thing. It's they're peddling the they're, they're, they're basically grifting on the doorway to heaven. You know, you know, they're saying you can't have spiritual enlightenment or spiritual place unless you go to that place, unless you give me your money mm -hmm. so that I here in the present moment living this world, you know, can have have your money and you can go away and it'll be fine. You know, um, so it's an interesting thing. It, it, the peddling of fear. Now, what what is so beautiful about what you said is that you're not living in that fear. You know, you are you are literally living your life being who you are. And experiencing it now. Now, granted, you probably have a cache of toilet paper somewhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> For sure, because it was hard to get my Charmin. Uh, not they're not a sponsor of ours. I just prefer it. You know, when COVID first hit, so there's some extra in the storage closet, and I'm not thinking about that now. And right, frankly, right. if I go back to the math issue. Uh, 144,000, our percentage, our chance there is not very good. So <laughs> I may as well just have fun. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, it's so, it's so funny you say that because isn't that what, in reality, isn't that what spirituality should be, is having a fun and joyful time in your life yes. rather than focusing on the doom and gloom of the end times? Absolutely. Now, that, that's I mean, so interesting. I believe that we are meant to live a joyful life. And that is, in fact, what God wants for us. Mm -hmm. it, that being wants us to live fully and experience all the beauty. I'm going to use the word, I'm going to use he simply because that's referenced most often, even though I think of it as the one or whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to start calling it whatever because we use that a lot too. Uh, Spirit, you know. Yes. Why would there be so much beauty and opportunity and joy in the world if we weren't meant to experience it? And we feel fully alive when we're in joy, not right. when we're in doom and gloom. Right. So, mm -hmm. so it's tell me how... Good. I'm sorry. Tell me how we took this one person's writings in this one religion and we sold this story. And I say we loosely because we didn't do it to the masses of Christianity, essentially. Right now. And then second follow up question is, are Islamic people, Muslims, Buddhists are obviously not thinking this, uh, and other religions are they? Do they have their own version of end times? 
Oh yeah, and actually most of the most of the monotheic uh, religions, specifically coming that are rooted in Abraham, which is um, Christianity, you know, Ju- Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Sufism, Baha'i. All of them have some sort of end time sort of scenario. Um, okay. But what's interesting is the interpretations. Um, like in Islam, they believe flat out that Jesus is going to return for Judgment Day. Okay. You know, they they believe that, that, that Jesus was a prophet, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of judgment and things that are in the end. The interesting thing is in Christianity specifically, uh, Revelations, the book Revelations, right? Well, first of all, Revelations is supposed to be like, oh, I had a epiphany, I had a revelation, <laughs> something new. Is coming in. You know, to me, Revelations feels great, you know. <laughs> right, wisdom has been revealed. But now, a little historical context about Revelations. There was this old apostle, one of the oldest that, that lived. His name was John. What a great guy he was. Incredible guy, right? <laughs> he, en- he ended up getting imprisoned on a little island known as Patmos in Greece. And he in the cave of Patmos, which I've, I've had the privilege of standing in the cave. <laughs> um, it's really an amazing place. Um, and... When you're standing in the cave, and you you can see how someone could go mad in that cave. <laughs> um, but um, he had a vision. Now, in the vision, he's he's talking about all these all these things: the beast of six six six, and the coming of this, and the coming of that, and the blah 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 blah. And this is all going to happen. And he was sending this revelation out to all the Christian churches that were out there, all the all the settlements of Christianity. He was sending them out as a message, okay? What eventually happened was, um, you know, there was a whole bunch of Roman stuff that was going on at the time by a guy named Nero, and Nero, the the, the, the fiddling guy, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, right? <laughs> he just fiddled around. <laughs> You're just full of puns today. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, theologians for years have said that 666 is a nu- numerical code for the name Nero. And people were saying, well, that can't be true. The mark of the beast, 666, Nero, Nero, Nero. It can't be Nero. It can't be Nero. It has to be something more esoteric than that, because, especially because John himself was an esoteric writer. I mean, somebody who wrote God is Love, <laughs> you know, he's pretty esoteric. So in the past several years, uh, Bible scholars have actually, they've been thinking it's been Nero for a long time. And this, this message was just sending basically coded messages out to Christians. Okay. About basically saying, you know, this is what we need to look out for. The beast is doing this. The beast is doing that. And Nero was the beast. Bible scholars in the past several years have have actually changed their view to be more sure that it's Nero, because they found another they found another copy of the original writings in a different language, and when they trans in in that language when they translate it the number is not 666 it's 663 but when they translate it nero in that language it came out to 663 oh goodness so they believe that that it's absolutely it's nero and that this was a political writing sent out to you know pick, tell the the christian settlements what to look out for with nero and so <laughs> it's a very it's a very interesting thing so all these Big esoteric things are just code. They're just code for for big, scary things that the government's doing to you. You know, they're a little bit, a little bit of a conspiracy theory sort of thing, right? Okay. <laughs> Revelations is the original conspiracy theory. Thing. <laughs> We've just found out who Q was, right? <laughs> right. It's a revelation. <laughs> John was Q. <laughs> now, if you're a Star Trek fan, that'll mean something entirely different. Right, uh, so no. I, I am. I'm a. I love Star Trek. The I've been told Keith, I would love Star Trek. You would love Star Trek. Yeah, it is. It's so. Uh, the the the. I'm going. We're off on a Star Trek topic for just a second. <laughs> the concepts of of what the Federation stands for is very spiritual. Yes, I is it the new generation? That's the one that new I would be all yeah. on board with. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and the character of Q is an omnipotent character. So he, in the sh- episodes, he gives you these moments of going, what would like, what would omnipotence be like? And he actually, there's a couple episodes where he actually um, 
tells a story about death and, and the purpose of life. So there's a lot of real big spiritual messages in there. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm not one of the guys who would ever put on the costume and do all that kind of thing. But, but I like, I like shows like that. Like I, I there's a animation called um, Avatar, the last airbender. And I used to watch it with my son. And the more I watched it, I was like, Holy smokes. They're talking about Buddhism. They're talking about, they're talking about all these, these really amazing topics but the kids don't know. And I was like, yeah, watch more of that one. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I enjoy it. And I'm assuming they don't have the doomsday theories in them. Well, in, in, in that one, it builds to a big battle, of course, cause it's a, it's a, you know, animation, but, um, it, it, the thing that ends up winning is, is his, his inner power and his love, you know, so mm. it really, oh, ends up being, yeah, it's a really, it's really amazing. Um, but so as far as revelations and, and doomsday and the end times, you know, there's another quote in the Bible that I that people tend to overlook when they get into revelations and, and the rapture and all that. And it's like, no one will know the day or the hour when he comes. Right. So if you believe that that there's going to be some, a deity coming back, mm -hmm. which I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, you know, I, anyway, I don't I'm, I'm not. Uh, broad enough in my knowledge or my awareness to know what's going to happen in the future. And I'm not vain enough to think I do, mm -hmm. you know, cause if you think, if you're sitting here thinking you're that, you know, what's going to happen in the future that I know that I'm going to be one of the 144,000 that get picked up, you know, get gathered up and hauled away, you know, then, you know, you're actually going against what the Bible says. No one will know. So yeah. live your life in, in you know, turn the other cheek, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I feel like if you know that you're one of them, you're definitely not. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Aren't we meant to live humbly? Isn't there humility in, in, as a theme in the Bible? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. My, one of my favorite quotes is um, by the Dalai Lama. And he says, my religion is simple. My religion is kindness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kindness is to me, you know, if you're living kindly, and I, and by the way, he didn't ever in his life um, take Jesus as his savior, and I don't think he's going to hell. Um, but um, <laughs> right, so but when I look at when I look at the Dalai Lama and, and and what he said, living that kindness, if you're living kindly, you shouldn't be afraid of anything. You know, your 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 fear is is thrust upon you by your belief, and if you believe in end times. And you believe in doom and gloom and fire and brimstone. And, you know, people are afraid of death because of the fact that they're afraid they're going to hell, you know, yes. <laughs> and I don't yes. believe in a hell, a hell either. No. And if you, if you instead live with the fact that this body is, is simply a package for this particular life and it's not going with me, mm. then it really, we want to, of course, take care of the vessel we're in because it's the only one we have in this particular lifetime. And ultimately, it's our spirit that's going to go on. And we don't have to hold so tightly to any idea. We want to be kind. We don't need a middleman to reach our own nirvana or our version of heaven, whatever you, th because honestly, I believe whatever you believe is what is going to happen for you. And so if you believe that if you don't give thousands of dollars to the church, <laughs> then you're going to go to hell. Well, you're probably right, but I think you're already there. And so personally, I'd rather live a heavenly life right now and be kind and be love and, and be humble and know that as long as I am doing what is right and good for myself, for others in the world, then I'm, I'm good. My, I will, I will have heaven in whatever form it comes in. Right. Right. And you know, it's, what's, what I find really fascinating is that everything that we've talked about here has been brought about by organized religion. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these doom and glooms, all of these things are brought about by organized religion telling us that this is the way it's going to be. You know, this is what's going to happen. And I, my most spiritual experiences have happened in the woods. Mm -hmm. I, I've been walking through the woods or I remember one day um, I had just gone to a place. I was performing at a festival here in Ohio 
And right near where I was staying was this beautiful ravine with this, this river with a rock bed. And it was like, there's this rock beach. It was, and I mean, it's like a, like a flat rock that was probably 50 foot square. It was giant <laughs> piece of ground, but all solid rock. And the river ran by it. And I went out there. I used to go out there every day and meditate there because I just liked the, and I would sit there and, and I'd come out of meditation. And I can't tell you how many times I'm sitting there and a giant blue heron flies right over my head or, I get up and I, after I finished the meditation, there was a there was a log that went over a over a river. And I walked out on the log and I was still in that in that space of just, you know, clear thinking, one with everything, sort of feeling that vibration of of, of love and oneness. And I'm standing there on that log and I look to my left and right beside me, just on the bank of the river, is an eight point buck staring at me. Oh my goodness! And and we're just sitting here talking you know, in our minds. Right? <laughs> How are you? And then when my when my conscious mind kicked in, I went, "Oh, cool!" And it took off running. But <laughs> <laughs> right. But that moment, that connection, it it, it I, I find those moments of, with God. Like I remember in Florida, I was getting, I was down there doing a show down there, and we were in a, we were staying in a park, and I I. I was doing a Renaissance festival, so I was staying in my Airstream travel trailer. I had a beautiful old, old seventy three Airstream, all polished oh. and shiny and beautiful. And um, we were in a campground, and we and the the fair site was on the other side of this lake. And I and I'd get up in the morning, and I would go before anybody was even awake. I'd go over by the lake, and I would just sit down on the bench, and I would just meditate there because I liked being outside in nature. Mm -hmm. And I came out of meditation. I looked up. And there were 17 turtles sitting on a log oh looking God. looking at me. There was <laughs> rabbits. I mean, I mean, there was like, I can't tell you, there was there was like a, a ridiculous amount of animals within within 30 feet of me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, by by coming to that serene place in your mind, you become part of the image. And the image is God, as Bible, as the Bible would say, you, you're in God's image. You know, so if you're in God's image and you're and you can calm your mind to be part of it, what happens is everything else just calms down around you. And mm -hmm. Sw Swami Narayan said that because he was out fear, the lion didn't give him anything to be fearful for, and that's why the lion was asleep at his feet. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that space of being it, finding God that way. Now, if I'm consciously putting myself into a place where they're telling me that God is not only separate from me, but judging me and going to doom me to a horrible end, mm -hmm. then that's not God, in my opinion. Absolutely, I agree. You know, it's, it's not God. It's it's something different. It's fear, and it's yeah. fear peddling. Yes, it's fear peddling. It's horrible. And, you know, if you're living in that much of a fear state, you're probably not going to make it. Uh, to the point where he comes back and saves those 144,000 people because you're going to have a heart attack. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, if you're, if you're living in your present moment fearfully, you're just creating a subconscious belief of fear behind you. Mm -hmm. And the more you create that subconscious belief of fear behind you, then your subconscious mind is just going to show you more things to be fearful for. Absolutely, and absolutely. Yes, you will get what you ask for every time. Yeah, right. So love, love is a choice and, and spirituality is a choice. You've got to sit in your present moment. You've got to choose to be that that person who is not afraid of the, the dark end times, who is not afraid, who's not focused on a negative outcome, who's not focused on, you know, the 166 or 600, 600, 666, you know, the, the beast that's going to come and tear us all apart. You know, it's it's you have to stay in the space of I am. And what did, what did Moses say God's name was? I am that I am, mm -hmm. period. You know, I am that I am. So if I am being joyful, loving, spiritual, and, and one with the source, one with God, then I don't have to worry about anything else because I am what I am. Exactly. <laughs> Does it make sense? It makes total sense. And so if when you put it that way, and you consider all the fear mongering that goes on in organized religion. Take away, take away the Bible and simply sit with nature like you've done or sit with yourself and sit with openness 
to whatever comes through or to you and you'll you will know you will have the answers but if we allow our minds to be clouded up with all the stories we've been told we will never experience peace we will never experience heaven we will never experience what i believe we're here to do love joy fulfillment right Right, exactly. I, and, and what is love, joy, and fulfillment? But God. Exactly. Right? <laughs> right? And now we talk about, we talk about in our last uh, episode, we talked about the idea of, you know, the name of God. Mm -hmm. And I think we've talked about the name of God many times in this episode because we've talked about love. We've talked about source. We've talked about oneness. You know, I still use God because I came, I came back to being okay with calling it God because I don't believe God is going to judge me in the end. And I don't believe God is going to, if God is love, God's not going to take me to a fearful end and a fire and a brimstone experience because that's not what love can do or does. And so I don't, I don't live my life fearfully at all. And what's really interesting to me is the, as, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be 57 in a month and a half. Right. So, um, and when I, I look at my life now, I, I look and I don't fear death. I, I don't fear death in any way, shape, or form. When my mother was uh, coming to her last year, um, she was really afraid of not leaving something for her children. Mm -hmm. right? So she was living in a fearful existence of not being that good provider, that good parent. And we're all like, Mom, spend the money. Go, you know, go have, make your life great. We're fine. You know, do that. She, she wouldn't do it, but she lived that way. And yeah. I was very grateful in the fact that my mom, who was, you know, a wonderful, wonderful person and lived her spirituality in silence. Nobody saw the things that she was really doing for people. Um, but she was on, on the cover. She was the devout Christian, a very devout Catholic specifically. Mm -hmm. And in the end times, she and I were able to get into re and end time, the end times. <laughs> in the end times. In her end times, right? Of her life um, specifically, yeah. Right. We were we were able to talk to um, talk about deep spiritual things, mm -hmm. and she shared with me something really interesting that I found just fascinating. You know, I said in, in one of the earlier podcasts about all the weird experiences I had as a kid, all the out of bodies and all that thing, yeah. and and. I said, Mom, I've, I've always wondered why, why you became so Catholic. Why did you do that? And she, um, it, it, we were the only two in the house, and it was almost like she looked around to make sure nobody <laughs> else would. Okay, make sure nobody hears this. She says, John, I had an out of body experience during a mass, and I was up out of my body. I was looking at the altar, and I looked to my right, and other people were up out of their body as well. She says, and it was a huge. Catholic experience for me because she was in a church, mm -hmm. right? So now I have my huge out of body experiences in the woods or, you know, sometimes I have them when I'm, when I'm, you know, out in the street and I just happen to see a moment that I can glimpse into something that's loving and caring, you know, that to me is finding, is seeing God. And for my mom, having that happen in a church was a sign, you mm -hmm. know, but as she got older, she began to realize that it wasn't about the building and it wasn't about what the guy on the front was saying or the doom and gloom that he was talking about. It was mm -hmm. about her personal experience of coming out of her body. And I remember uh, she had had a surgery and they damaged her vocal cords. Okay. And as she got older, she was losing her voice. And I was working with her on bringing her voice back. Cause I, I, I have in my coaching, I've been able to see people heal themselves. And so I was talking to her and I said to her one day, she says, why isn't this work working? I said, Be, first of all, because you just asked that question. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't, you exactly. don't believe it's working. You and get what I, you ask for. I said, I said, and what that means is you don't have enough faith. Well, she thought that was hysterical because she devoted her entire life to her faith. But she didn't realize that I wasn't talking about faith in Jesus. And I was mm -hmm. talking about confidence, belief that it was being done. And I had to explain to her, I said, Mom, it's, you know, Jesus never said, you know, it is your faith in me that heals you. He said, it's, it's your faith that heals you. You have to take your own personal faith, your own personal journey with your oneness, with source, with God, and realize that that 
that doom and gloom future that we've been talking about for this this amount of time is your choice. Mm-hmm. You you can have a doom and gloom future all you want. If you want that, go to it. Just leave me out of it, okay? Yes. <laughs> oh, there's so many good little nuggets in all that you just said in the last few minutes. And, you know, the first one that I think of is there again, we are not our body. And right. so if you... If you know, like I just recently did a, a 40 day thing based on A Course in Miracles, not of A Course of Miracles. And one of the things that they really strive to have you accept is that you are not your body. And therefore, there is no sickness unless you're identifying with your body. If you're identifying with source or God, whatever you want to call it, then there is no sickness because you are then in the image of God, which is all light and love. Right. 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 So it says what you think you become, you create your world. Yes, you know? exactly. So having and, faith is simply knowing that you are not this body. You are what's within that, right. that spirit that will continue on beyond this particular body. And that's why there's no need people can choose to, but there's no need to fear because you will go on. Death is right. simply a transition. It's not an ending. Right. And we'll and in another episode, we'll get into the, the concepts of going on and the implications of like reincarnation and things of that oh, yes. nature. Be reincarnation a is a big one um, for me personally. <laughs> you know? um, mm-hmm. But um, I think it's I think it's a fascinating element of life because it it really to me proves that this is um, impermanent. Mm-hmm. This is this is just an illusion that's surrounding our consciousness. Now, when you first start meditating, and Tamara put up a really really pithy you know, <laughs> post this morning about meditation, and I completely agree with everything that was said. And I was I put in my little two cents in the bottom. It was like uh, you know the people who get become good meditators, are the people who let the quiet times last longer in between the bubbles that pop up of yeah. the thought, right? Yeah, and and people don't realize that they have to keep doing it until the quiet times last long. That's it. They're like, I'm a bad meditator. <laughs> right, <laughs> Just giving right. up. You never fail anything until you stop trying. So Right, right. <laughs> and once again, I am God's name. Whatever you're asking, God's name is granted. I am a bad meditator. God's going to say, you suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> God's going to give you what you've asked for. You gotta get. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> you always get what you ask for. So be very mindful. If you're asking for doomsday, end of times, uh, you might. So here's the, the trick too. I am going to be those one of those 144,000 and I am fearful and I am believing in doomsday. There's a conflict in there. How how can you be one of the ones if you're in that negative fear space? Right. Because and and also, how can you write you're resisting what you want? So you're pushing it away from you, in fact. And how can you be a loving spiritual person if you're going to jump on the lifeboat and let everybody else drown? Well, that too. And also, if you're living in that fear space, I don't know about you, but if I'm worried about something, if I'm, and I'm allowing that to really take up space in my brain, I am more irritable. I am definitely less kind. I snap at the people I love and, and that's not going to get me on that boat or whatever vehicle has taken me <laughs> to the promised land, <laughs> right? Because then it's the opposite of what it means to be a good, kind, loving person, a Christian right. and, um, and get to heaven. I love, I love the quotes over the word Christian, because mm-hmm. as Gandhi said, I love your Jesus. I don't like your Christians. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because Christianity is the dogma and the, and the tradition and the fear and Jesus never said the things that they're saying now. Mm-hmm. Jesus never said those. Jesus was a loving, caring guy who truly understood his oneness with source. And he said it all the time. But he also said, greater works than I have done, you will do. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he said, you have this ability that is that far surpasses my own if you so choose, you know. The, the doorway to the kingdom is through your own door. Mm-hmm. You know, it's wow. <laughs> you know, you know not, not my door, you know, if, unless I, you know, I, and I'm the doorman and you have to have to ask me and give you a tip to get, let you get in. That's not the way it works. <laughs> you 
right? That's not, yeah, that's not on a five, he'll let you through. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, I think we can come down to a couple of different things. Now, we, we've realized, number one, there is no end times, right, right? Mm-hmm. The, we've also realized that God, God is a loving and caring experience, and living that loving and caring experience then creates more of that, which means the end times is moot again. Mm-hmm. We've also disco- discovered that the rapture is uh, historically inaccurate. Um, and and a, a conspiracy theory brought about by somebody who was peddling fear, and then the fear mongers grabbed it and did that. We also came up to the point where we realized that Revelations is, is a is a QAnon plot <laughs> against Nero, right? <laughs> right. So we have just completely debunked the end times, and I'm jazzed about that because I think it's one of the most destructive things on the planet Earth. Is this yeah. the, the people out there? who are focused on that doom, focused on that gloom, and focused on a negative outcome, are living that out and thrusting it upon the rest of us. Absolutely. And I I say to that, if you are going to choose a story of life to adopt, choose one that feels good. (laughs) Right. I think this was a great podcast, and I'm really excited about it. And to be really, really honest, how great is this marketing going to be when I put up, oh, my God, the end times. It's going to be great. <laughs> so, yes, but, and on that, it's the end times for today. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Tamara. It was a lovely conversation. And I'm Thank really you, glad. I'm glad, really glad that you jumped off into your own, you know, unknowing uncertainty of where we were going with this conversation. Because I know you said you said, like, I, don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. But I knew, I knew that once you sat into your 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 true self and your authentic self, I knew that there was going to be so much to talk about. I was so so excited about this conversation, and and I know when I proposed it, you're like, "Well, I don't want to focus on that." <laughs> it was like, <laughs> right? Well, I to focus on love and joy. Why are we talking about right. doom? <laughs> and I think that's exactly what we just did. And I think we debunked we debunked the crap, and we we uh, put out the love. So absolutely awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. It has been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you guys. Remember, tomorrow is based upon your choice today. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. For comments and suggestions, please visit us at on Facebook at Spirit Cafe Podcast. Also, find us on YouTube to watch the video of this podcast at Spirit Cafe Podcast. And finally, visit us at SpiritCafePodcast.com.